Well, there it is, and it's a pretty doggone big box. Well, there you have it. Have to put the wheels on, but. While the fuel fill looks to be fairly big, it has a tiny strainer that's mostly blocked by a red plastic indicator that says to stop. This is pretty bad. The adapter is oriented so that the travel trailer plug is not installed upright in a normal orientation this is just obviously junk or perhaps the problem is they didn't pay attention to the orientation of the 240 volt plug from the start i don't know the plug panel is recessed about an inch which might prevent you putting any kind of adapter such as this to connect to uh, directly on the generator. You might need an extension cord because as you can see, this isn't going to work. Also, when you flip up these, they actually hit the fuse installations above them. That was a pretty bad place to install those fuses. However, some things I do like are the wheels are large enough to roll over grass and gravel, etc., which many larger generators are not today. The panels do not require any screws to remove. They come off by hand, which is really desirable. So I can't show you the sound readings but I took them and at about 3,500 watt load, the sound reading I got was 69 to 70 dB at 23 feet. That's not all that quiet, but that is under half load. Uh, at lower loads, it's a little bit less, but obviously it's nothing like unloaded sound reading. The end result, do I like it? Yes at the price I got it for from Tractor Supply, which was very cheap. Would I pay $2,300 plus tax for it? No, it is not that par of a quality generator, if you ask me. It is too loud, has too many flaws and omissions. There is no wattage indication on the legs, um, the plugs are limited. A lot of things that enough thought wasn't put into. I should probably mention when I ran it on uh, 3,500 watt load, I was running it through uh, a kilowatt adapter that was, or meter, that was on the travel trailer adapter, which was plugged into the, the 240 volt. And that was basically using one side of the 240 volt. So I got the full 29.2 amps at um, 120 volts running on just one side of the generator without any issues. Um, it also did not overload at its rated um, amperage for that one side. Many of these cheaper generators people are finding out will overload or not even reach their rated um, amperage or wattage. Something to, else to think about. But the biggest problem to me is this fuel fill. And what happens is if you try and fill this with a five gallon fuel can, fuel's gonna splash out and go everywhere. The filter and the fill hole is just too small. 
The only way you can fill a generator, typically with a big fuel can like a five gallon that takes several minutes to empty, is to rest the fill spout on this lip and let the fuel flow in. And today's EPA approved fuel cans are basically all or nothing. It's either gonna flow as fast as it comes or it's, or it's off. And most of that fuel, most of that fuel is going down here, hitting that lip and that indicator and splashing out. The only chance you have of filling it is to completely take the strainer out. And that's okay. Um, but I can see myself grinding this hole out larger and putting a larger filter basket in there in the future. Because this is simply too difficult. It's the hardest thing to fill I've tried to fill yet. To uh, add a little bit more, um, I tested the sound under eco mode at 23 feet and got 61 dB exactly as they claim at idle, basically. Uh, up close and next to the generator, it was 64, 60, I mean, no, it was 74, 75 dB right next to the generator. Uh, off eco mode with no load. It was about 64 to 65 dB at 23 feet. And of course, like I already said, under a 3,500 watt load, it was 6970 dB at 23 feet. I have not tested it yet at full load, but that will be coming up. But it won't get quieter. So if you're expecting this to be as quiet as a Honda, um, it's not going to be. <laughs>